Hi friends, Casey here with Digging Deep. The Lord woke me up the last two days at 3 a.m. giving me words to write down. When I woke up this morning, I heard the Antichrist spirit is here. I got up and I was reading the Word of God and I did a quick search on Antichrist on my Bible app and pulled up 1 John chapter 2 verses 18 through 23. So let's read them together. Little children, it is the last time as you have heard that the Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they have went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But we have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth that the Son hath the Father also. Now, this is a warning. This is not my typical Bible study that I normally bring to you, but I felt led by the Holy Spirit to bring this to your attention because we must have ears to hear and eyes to see what is going on right now. Yesterday, I heard about COP27. Have you heard of this? The COP stands for Conference of Parties of the UNFCCC, United Nations Climate Change Conference. This is their 27th conference for the 2022 United Nations Climate Change. Now, the reason that I bring this up is for two reasons. Number one, I have never heard of this, and it's been going on for 27 years. And number two, this conference is coming up on November 6th through the 18th, 2022, in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt. This conference represents countries that have ratified the United Nations Treaty back in 1994. The United Nations framework, pretty much, for a Convention on Climate Change. So you might be wondering, why am I bringing this up? This conference is taking place, get this, on Sinai Peninsula. Yes, on Mount Sinai. The Paris Agreement many of us are familiar with was a result of COP21 back at their 2015 conference. The U.S. withdrew from this agreement in 2020, but rejoined, surprise, surprise, in 2021. Anyway, let me read to you this, it's a PDF and I will put it on the screen for you. And it's from the Elijah Interfaith Institute. This institute board consists of world religious leaders of Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and religions of India. So at this conference, you will have the Pope, world leaders, and heads of religions of Muslim, Jews, Catholics, Christians, and religions of India all together. It reads, A weekend event will be held at Mount Sinai that will be heart-stirring, transformative, and a moment of inspiration for religious communities and for humanity. Never before has such an inter-religious climate repentance ceremony been undertaken. From this moment and event, motivation for action emerges, calling for re-examination of deep-seated attitudes and for identifying ways to transform these attitudes from the well-being of Earth, our common home. Over the weekend of November 12th through the 13th, few official discussions or activities are planned at COP27. This provides a major moment when the attention of media and participants can be turned to interreligious climate messaging and a transformative vision. On Sunday, November 13th, religious leaders will return to Mount Sinai, a mountain whose memory and meaning loom large as a place of revelation in the collective consciousness of Christianity 
Judaism, Islam, and others. It is a site for turning to God and receiving God's message. We return to Sinai in a moment of repentance and quest. We seek a new vision for humanity in its endangered existence. And we seek to receive and amplify a message of life-sustaining living and habits that humanity needs to hear today. In this spirit, the Project Partners will bring together premier religious leaders from the world's major religions to gather upon Mount Sinai to engage in a first-ever climate repentance ceremony and to put forth a prophetic in a religious call to action, climate justice, 10 universal commandments. This sounds to me like we are seeing the Antichrist spirit at work, friends. We are not to be ignorant of times and seasons that we are living in. And I believe that God has brought this to my attention to bring it to you today. We must see the spiritual war going on around us, and this appears to be the framework of the Antichrist spirit bringing the world's religions together on Mount Sinai. Now, most of us know this is where God spoke with Moses. You can read about it in Exodus chapter 32, verses 7 through 12, but for time's sake, I am just going to paraphrase for you today. While God was speaking with Moses, the children of Israel made a molten calf and were worshiping it because Moses had been gone 40 days and 40 nights. Now, of course, this stood out to me because Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. But anyways, I don't want to get off track here. So God told Moses, go get down. The people have corrupted themselves and made a molten calf and have worshiped it and have sacrificed to it. God told Moses to leave me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them and that I may consume them. God was going to destroy them and create a new nation for Moses. Moses then pleaded with God and God repented and didn't destroy them. So I say all of that to ask you, do you really think this is a good idea for all of the world's religions to come together on this mount for a climate repentance ceremony? When I heard this, I thought immediately, do they not fear God? What are they doing? My friends, this is the Antichrist spirit. The last few years, we have seen things start to move at an unprecedented rate. In 2020, I was walking out of my kitchen into my living room, and I felt a force push against me, and I heard I'm pushing back. Friends, I believe God is pushing back while the people are running towards making our God angrier and angrier. Who knows how long he will contain his wrath before unleashing it upon this earth. Now this might make some of you upset to hear me say this, but I do not believe in this whole climate change thing. I believe it is a scheme from the pit of hell. If they cared about the planet, China and other places would not be allowed to pollute the planet like they are doing while we buy their goods. Another reason that I don't believe it is because we cannot save this planet. If you read your Bible, you will see that this world, the entire thing is going to pass away. Now, I am not for polluting the planet, so don't hear me say something that I am not saying. But we must not be ignorant of these people and these conferences. They are not stopping climate change. Let's not choose to believe their lies. They are not for the environment, but for global order and global control, just like the Bible has prophesied. One world leader, one world currency, and one world power to control the people with the mark of the beast. We have already seen how fast that could happen with the vaccine passport. I am not saying these things to scare you, but to make you aware that the framework is here and it is very close. Once God stops holding these things back, it is going to break forth like wildfire upon this earth. It will happen very quickly because all the foundations have been laid. That is why we must not fall into this trap of putting our treasures here on this earth. If we do, we will be deceived. 
So we must be wise and have spiritual eyes to see and ears to hear. Amen. When I think of the Antichrist, the final one, I think of Hitler on steroids, a global Hitler. I think we need to prepare our hearts and our lives now while we have time. Spread the hope of Jesus with everyone we know so that they can have eternal hope. I don't know how long the Lord will tarry. No man does. I can't guarantee you the rapture will happen before the Antichrist appears because to me, the scripture is not crystal clear about this. Men have doctrines on this, but that doesn't mean that they're correct. But here is what I do know. Jesus said that he would return for us. And we must not fear man, but fear God. And by the fear of God, I mean understand how powerful our God is to save us and how powerful he is to destroy us and this entire planet. Please get your hearts and your lives right with God and be the light in the darkness because the light of this world lives inside of you. Like I said earlier, this is not the typical video that I share, but I felt led very strongly to come and to share this important information with you today, not to scare you because this channel is not about fear, but about faith. We must have our eyes wide open so we are not deceived. Before I share a scripture and close, I want to ask you to please like this video and share it with your friends and family. Also, I want to remind you that I share Bible studies every Tuesday, so I want to personally invite you to join me. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss my random videos I upload like this one as the Holy Spirit moves me to do so. Now let's read some powerful faith-filled scriptures to close because like I said, this channel is one of faith and not fear. And I pray that this information that I have brought to you today was not received in any other way than a message of faith. So let's read 1 John chapter 2 verses 24 through 29. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie. And even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. So I want to encourage you today to search out this COP27 conference for yourself and see what the Holy Spirit reveals to you. When I heard about it, I immediately thought of Moses up on the mount and how God's anger was kindled against the children of Israel so much that he wanted to consume them. So I don't feel in my spirit that it is a good idea for all these different religions to come together on Mount Sinai and provoke our God to anger. We really need to be in prayer. We really need to be seeking the Lord not be moved in a spirit of fear, but be looking up because our redemption is drawing nearer every day. So until next time, take care and stay in the word.